So I understand that CGI blood in horror films is one of your pet peeves. I do not like CGI blood. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I have used some when I've had to, you know, mainly for cleanup, but I, uh, I hate when I see it in a film and it does not age well. Like if you watch a film that would look, maybe you thought looked really good six years ago and they did a bunch of fake CGI blood and you look at it now, it just, it does not look real. There's no shine to it. There's no, I mean, there's tons of shine to it. There's no texture. It all moves in that weird CG algorithm. I actually, honestly, I'm like, I'm so over through CGI at this point. I can't tell you enough. I watched The Matrix the other day and that film stands up so well against any big budget blockbuster from today. And you go watch like Avengers and I'm just, I'm so disappointed in the way it looks because it's all just in a green screen. Nothing's practical. Half the time they're not even wearing the outfits that they put on in the movie. And it just, it's very hard for me to lose myself in that world when it just doesn't have the same tangibility. You know, you even go back and look at early Highlander films and they're all matte paintings and these beautiful, you know, backdrops that are hand painted. And you really feel that, you know, it's, it's it's got such a fantastical sense to it, but it's still recognizable because it's not made by computer imagery. And so I really, I, I don't like CG that much in general, but I really don't like blood. I love practical effects. In Trespassers, we did some really cool practical effects, which people, you know, um, I, I think people will really dig. I mean, there's a couple violent gags that I'm like super proud of. And we cleaned it up a little bit digitally. It's an amazing, you know, you got to use the tools that we have to, to to, you know, I like, I don't think it's bad to use digital to, you know, uh, emphasize or add on or take away, but I just love the way practical blood really works. And um, I, uh, I love, you know, watching it get everywhere and people, I didn't even love when you're making the film, it's on gets on everything, everyone's hands, everyone's clothes, everyone's like, I got blood on me. Like this is fun air that comes into the set because there's blood everywhere. Um, and, yeah, I like I like blood, but not 3D blood. <laughs> Any other pet peeves? Uh, pet peeves that I have. Um, in terms of how like films are made in, in recent years? Uh, when, the, when actors are clearly not in the same room with each other and they try to fake it, trick us that they are, and it gets like really, I, that's really starting to bother me a lot lately. Um, but, and it's understandable. I mean, the, it's impossible to schedule all these giant stars together. <laughs> But I just want to see them, um, you know, I, I just want to see, I, it's hard for me to get lost in those moments. Uh, obviously, I think that, you know, once you make a movie or two, you're kind of looking at it in a little different, a little more uh, cynical light watching other people's movies. Um, I love guns in movies, but I'm a little over the kind of like endless shootout, uh, shootouts that go on in a lot of movies. I, I like the John Wick films and all that stuff, but... It's just in today's uh, climate, I think it's a little irresponsible as filmmakers to make, you know, so much gun porn. Yeah. I don't mean that I'm someone that has used guns in every single film I've made. And I'm not saying I'm not a, uh, I'm not flagrant of doing that as well, but it's something that I've at least started to think about as a filmmaker and has really stood out to me. Um, I, a big pet peeve I have, I hate scenes that just drive the plot. You know, I think plot, when I think a lot of times plot gets in the way of a good story. And that's something that bugs me a lot. And you see it a lot in kind of, uh, in this like new globalist cinema that we've entered where a lot of films are made for around the world. I think we try to push plot down people's throats where I think we're not giving enough credit to the global audience that they're actually like really smart and they want strong characters over big plots. Um, so that's a big thing to me. Yeah, those are kind of my pet peeves. I mean, you know, in China, everyone talks about, oh, they're making movies for China. Well, in China, a movie called Cap Capernaum, which was a really uh, small independent art house film that came out, I can't remember out of which country, um, made more money than Shazam there this year. And another film, Long Day's Journey Into Night, which I love, made more money than the first, than the last Avengers movie there. And these are very esoteric art house films. Mm. So I think we need to re-examine as Western filmmakers, the idea of like global audience and how we're trying to always push plot and I try to push simplicity down people's throats rather than allowing the audience to think for themselves. 
When you say that you've used guns in all of your films, how do you feel that um, going forward, maybe filmmakers should be more responsible? I think that, I think that we, we as a society, guns, we have a, a sickness in this country. And I think with, uh, regarding guns, and I think we just need to show that they have effects. It doesn't mean you don't use them. It just means that they have consequences. And to be honest about the consequences of a gun. And I think that's all you have to do. You know, I don't think a con I think for a long time, guns and cinema were considered an, uh, a source of masculinity or strength. I don't see that as the case anymore. Um, I uh, also think you can be a lot more creative finding other great weapons in movies to hurt people with. So that's another fun thing. I think that people should be taking advantage of a gun's a very easy solution to, you know, a more maybe creative, fun, uh, action sequence than just, you know, someone shooting someone. You, you can really f find another way to do that really well. I think you see that in a lot of Indonesian movies like The Raid or uh, Killers or Night Comes for Us and stuff. But yeah, I think we just have to remember as, uh, that we, have, we are going to put something out that's going to be live out there and going to be seen by people and that violence and guns do have consequences. And we shouldn't take that lightly. We, we wield a certain type of power as filmmakers and we're lucky to do this, and we shouldn't be that irresponsible. And if we want to be irresponsible, then we should own that irresponsibility in it. You know, if you want to just make irreverent films and just kill everyone, that's great. That's what your film's gonna be about then. And that's, that's cool, that's, your, that's what you're saying, you know? So, yeah. Can you think of a film where it's irreverent, but there is a responsible, I don't want to say message, that's like it's a bad connotation, but a film that, that shows something in a, in a healthier light, an unhealthy situation in a more responsible light. Yeah, I mean, I think that like irreversible, right? A film that um, has one of the most like intense, violent, what some people say gratuitous scenes uh, people have ever seen. I think it does a lot to talk about the conversation and I think it, it, it's not, the, the Gaspar Noe is no dummy. And I think you have to remember that when you watch a film like that and you have to be willing to discuss what it's talking about I think it's very okay to bring a reverent subject matter to light. I think people need that. I don't believe in in uh, political correctness and I don't believe in censorship whatsoever. So yeah, I, but I do think that you have a responsibility and you can't get mad when people re react to it, you know? So yeah. <laughs>